Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today featuring travel to Turkey. I'm Carla Malachowski with Rebecca Recommends and I'm joined by my colleague Brenda Hansen. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. The first half of the webinar will be an interview and conversational format and we're saving time at the end for you to ask questions to encourage a more interactive webinar. To ask a question, please click on the hand symbol in your participant panel and we will unmute you and introduce you by first name only. We will be recording the webinar and if you would like a link to the recording, please let us know. So let's get started. I'm so pleased to introduce Rebecca Slater, founder of Rebecca Recommends, and Jonathan Alder, CEO of Jonathan's Travel, an independent affiliate of Travel Store. So over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Carla, for the introduction. And hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. It's wonderful to see so many friends on the call. Um, I'm particularly excited this morning because um, we're going to be speaking with Jonathan. And Jonathan, really grateful to you that you've kindly agreed to share um, some time with us this morning so we can talk about your recent journey and experiences um, to Turkey. So Jonathan just returned from two weeks in Turkey where he worked with Si Song, uh, founded and run by Karen Fedorko for the last 20 years, who we're very proud to represent. So without further ado, Jonathan, I'm going to just dive straight in and um, ask you what inspired your recent trip to Turkey? Hey, Rebecca, it's so nice to talk to you today and be part of this. Uh, we love to share what we're doing with the rest of the travel community and the public and, and share what it's like out there right now. Um, after so many months at home and usually spending so much time on the road, we wanted to find a destination that was uh, incredible, cultural, beautiful, but also safe and was handled well. And that's where Turkey came up. Um, uh, I started working with Karen on the plan and we both got really excited about it and put it together quite quickly. Uh, and the payoff was just absolutely amazing and worth every second of it. Wonderful. So, I mean, kind of going back then to the beginning of the trip and before you left, did you take a COVID test before you left and was that difficult to organize? No, uh, we did. Um, while Turkey doesn't require it, uh, they do require health screenings and, and other things on arrival. Uh, we chose to and believe that all travelers should before they get on an airplane and leave just to know their status. Um, uh, in Los Angeles, fairly easy. Uh, there are a number of resources you can look at that can get a PCR test um, within, we did one that was within 24 hours. Um, but very easy, pulled right in, never got out of the car. They stick a swab up your nose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Later that night, actually, I got results. So it wasn't even a full 24 hours. Right. Um, two parts of that not only being a responsible traveler but also you never know these days if the rules are going to change and it could change mid-connection uh, turkey or anywhere the rules are changing yeah. frequently so if you get it in that for 72 hour to 48 hour window that almost everyone is asking for even if they change while you're flying you know you're good and you know you're covered for landing yeah no, that's really smart um, how was the flight to Turkey and the overall sort of airport experiences both here in the U.S. and when you arrived in Istanbul? So we chose uh, to fly um, a connecting flight um, uh, as uh, Lufthansa is more full service now than Turkish, who's cut back quite a bit. Um, the flight out of L.A. was easy. Everyone was wearing masks. The airport felt very safe. Uh, on arrival to Frankfurt, other than it was dead quiet compared to what Frankfurt normally looks like. Right, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> until until you get the the short terminal. Once we got out of international and over there, uh, it was a decent amount of people. But again, everyone complying with the rules. Uh, flight over was fine, was normal. Uh, the flight, both flights, I should say, Lufthansa has not cut their services at all in their higher classes of service. So for you or your clients that are looking to travel, um, if they're flying business or first or even premium economy, they'll barely notice if any difference. Um, food is normal, drinks are normal, bedding, all of that stuff. Uh, on arrival into Istanbul, um, we uh, it was it was again quieter, but pretty much mm -hmm. on normal except with temperature checks and a health form. 
great. Yeah, and it is a it is a really large airport. I've traveled through there before. So you do feel like there's a good amount of space and you're not necessarily on top of no, people. No, 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 no. And, and especially now, it's the joy of traveling now is um, all of the fun, none of the crowds. Um, I agree. <laughs> I, I don't think we went anywhere that we've seen crowds like I'll see on an LA freeway, for example. Now it's more crowded here than it is anywhere else I seem to be going at the moment. Yeah, yeah. How did Seasong support your pre-arrival and sort of during your visit? Oh, their their communication's incredible. Um, between uh, the two of them, I, you, you're never without an email reply uh, very quickly. Um, documentation sent fast, access itinerary sent through, so I had an online version in addition to a PDF. Um, all questions and support and problem solving, uh, th not only before, but throughout the trip, they they get an A-plus in my book any day on that. That's really wonderful to hear, thank you. Um, did you experience good health and safety protocols when traveling, so at the hotels and on the tours? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, starting, let me just start with Seasong. Uh, they've uh, taken their own uh, responsibility to enforce a number of protocols. For example, in the vehicles, they've they've um, installed dividers between the front and the back um, yeah. so that you have your own private area there and also put a microphone in so you can hear the guide uh, well. Um, so you have your own kind of sealed off area. There's, of course, no one else ever sharing your vehicle while you're using it during that period. Um, uh, interestingly enough, I didn't really realize this until going on this trip that that Turkey basically invented the idea of hand sanitizers. So you'll find oh, every uh, they call it cologne. They don't call it hand sanitizer. Um, so everywhere has cologne, which is 80% alcohol and some rose water, oh. um, or not rose water. So sorry, orange um, orange flower Lock. water. Oh, lovely. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> Every every place you go, if you want to go in uh, for a coffee, they will take your temperature at the door. They will also put sanitizer in your hand before you can walk in the door. Um, so I find that they are, um, particularly on the hand washing side, doing a lot more than I've seen anywhere else. Actually, Turkey, out of the last four to five countries I've seen recently, um, excels above them all. Um, That's so wonderful. Uh, masks are enforced and it's required to be worn even when walking down the street. Cops will give people fines. Mm. Uh, the hotels uh, across the board had all been sanitizing and cleaning everything um, extra, separating out the tables at restaurants, outdoor dining. Um, uh, they are highly encouraged if not required. Um, so you're seeing you're seeing a lot um, and it, it gave the feeling of safety and security throughout the whole trip. So you didn't have to worry and you could enjoy yourself. Yeah, but yeah, it sounds like they're doing it in a way that doesn't compromise on the experience. So you can oh, still go uh, yeah, and have this. Uh, let, me, let me add to that. It's not, I wouldn't say doesn't compromise the experience. Actually right now, the experience has improved. Um, mm -hmm. I don't find too many people that say, I really want 5,000 other tourists in the way of my photo. Um, this is the chance to go to those sites and go to those places and not have those type of crowds. It's naturally yeah. so distanced at the minute. Yeah, it's a gift to go, like you said, at the moment when it's not so busy. So um, I believe you visited Istanbul, um, Izmir, and Cappadocia. How did right. you get around um, when you were there? We flew. We flew place to place. We flew a combination of Turkish and Pegasus. Um, so we flew Turkish down to uh, Kayseri um, and then drove uh, with one of Karen's drivers over to uh, driver and guide, sorry, I should say, to, um, to the Cappadocia region and stayed at the beautiful, really fun museum hotel, which absolutely one of the best restaurants I've ever had in my life is there. Um, when we left there, we flew Pegasus. Uh, they were the only one that flew nonstop. And actually, between the two at the moment, Pegasus is the more pleasant experience, even comparing flying Turkish and business class, and Pegasus is all economy. Um, mm. uh, they're a little more lenient on their policies in terms of uh, not overcharging for luggage or, or gouging you on your carry-on baggage and charging for it now. 
Um, so they were actually a pleasant surprise. I was ready to really not like it, but it was it was right. it was good. It was I mean yeah. nothing to write home about, but uh, it's scary <laughs> that a low cost carrier now seems like the nice service. Um, and then back on Turkish uh, from Izmir to Istanbul when we went back. And they're fun enough. Um, they're actually flying a triple seven three hundred ER, so you're getting what you'd usually get from LA or Chicago, uh, and you're getting it for a one hour flight. So business class for two hundred dollars is still a flat bed. Yeah, wow, that's fantastic. Um, so you were there for two weeks. Do yep. you wish? Was you know was that a good amount of time for those destinations? Do you wish you'd have stayed longer? It was a for those destinations. It was perfect. Um, yeah. If you're doing those three, you're great. But for Turkey, uh, I'll give you an idea. We're going back again in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's just the best news. <laughs> Can I There's, come in your suitcase, please? <laughs> uh, I, I unfortunately Turkish will charge extra for the the extra bag. <laughs> but I'm My happy COVID to pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so that's but fantastic. It, it, so it's, well, there's so much more. There's so much more to do. Um, Karen already helped put together another six nights uh, that we have coming up, and honestly, I'm sure that won't be enough. There's so many more regions of the country I would like to see, but there's only so many days and so much time that we can fit into something. Yeah. Well, I love that you're returning. I mean, gosh, if that isn't an, an huge endorsement for the country and going there right now, I I don't know what is. Um, and her guide, what, her guides become almost like your best friends. I still talk to our guide in Istanbul all the time. Um, they're they're quite a great set of people um, that she yeah. works with. That's so wonderful. And like we know in our industry, the guides really make the yeah. trip, make or break. So to know to match the right client and the guide is so important. Um, Absolutely. what is one what is one thing, or perhaps there were several things that surprised you um, about your visit to Turkey? Um, how, how uh, we, we, so we came back, uh, in February, we were in Morocco and that was our, our uh, last trip right before everything shut down. Um, I was ready for Turkey to be a little bit more like Morocco and was surprised how modern and, uh, European grand capital Istanbul is. Um, uh, so just as a country as a whole, totally surprised me how much I loved it. Um, I'd only been once. I'd been to Kushidasi back in, Jesus, uh, 1996, um, but I'd never seen the rest of the country beyond that. So it's been on my list for years, um, and it was a nothing short of an amazing surprise. Um, and, and such. And right now, I'll mention one other thing that's so great about it. While Turkish may not be perfect, it is one of the biggest carriers flying in the world right now to everywhere. So you can use mm -hmm. Turkey not only as a destination, but as a great few days, week stop as part of something else over to Africa or over to somewhere else because the COVID tests are also very easy to get there, um, which yeah. means for the next destination, it's going to be cheap and easy to get tested again and get rapid results back that are good for your next destination, which is what we did from there as well. Yeah, I mean, when Turkey first opened in June, my team and I were sort of saying, actually, we could travel to Turkey and get tested for COVID, get the results back quicker than we could here in the U.S., which is oh, kind absolutely. of crazy. It was, I mean, we went on the worst day you could have done it. We were on Eid, um, so consider it as Christmas for them. Yeah. Um, so the staff in the airport was not the normal people there it was it was a bit of a a little bit of a mess and with that being a bit of a mess we still had results from an iso certified lab in uh, istanbul international airport in five hours yeah that's brilliant um was there a particular experience of the trip that sort of really stands out to you as the best memory Ooh, that's hard <laughs> tough one um i mean there were there were a couple of them uh oh boy um definitely in istanbul getting to go to the um uh parts of the uh bazaar and um that the public normally wouldn't be brought over to because there's nobody there right now was a treat getting to see areas you normally wouldn't see because it would just be too crowded was amazing um yeah. and especially the historical sites down in uh to go to pergamon or or uh, the virgin mary's house I mean, Mary's house, we had nobody. There was absolutely yeah. nobody. 
Um, so the opportunity to walk through not just once, but to go through again and really get a view of it instead of being pushed by a queue of thousands of people down the hill um, was yeah. quite an experience. Uh, Ephesus too, to get pictures. We were in the terrace houses, nobody there. Um, mm. The Library of Celsius, maybe 30 people. So oh. I, for someone that really, I enjoy taking photos uh, quite a bit to get that experience of of having the site to yourself. It's almost like a VIP private entrance without any of the calls of the VIP private yeah. entrance. Pergamon was just us um, for 10 or 20 minutes. There was not even a single other person there. How special, such a magical experience. Um, I mean, it sounds like you've been traveling a lot through this COVID time. Um, what's the best advice you've received before traveling to Turkey or maybe some of the other destinations you've gone to? um do do specifically to COVID or just in general well i think yeah in general because maybe we need to be a little bit more flexible now with how we travel or oh, that, sorry you went there for, um, for one second there um so best advice i could give before going to these um definitely flexibility uh right now it's a great time if you're traveling roll with the punches um flights cancel particularly on flight schedules are changing left and right um don't let that deter you from getting on a plane and traveling now. Uh, none of it ends up being a problem if you don't let it be a problem because everything is able to be reaccommodated, moved. There's always other options. Um, it's not as great as normal where everything would be steady, but your advantages to me at far outweigh uh, the risks. Um, we had, uh, I mean, at no point, and the, the trip changed right after Turkey. Uh, our entire destination changed. Um, still no financial losses, everything is covered. Um, so everything will be taken care of. Uh, you just have to, you know, be vigilant and checking on things and know what's coming up. But uh, at that point, when something happens, you deal with it and you move on. But the payoff is, I, I really, I mean, we travel months and months of the year normally. I've never seen a better time to travel than now. And how the world is operating, particularly out of the US, yeah. life is pretty normal um it's good to return to a sense of something like that for a while and um and then when you take that it's so many uh, the crowds are so much thinner than they normally be in high season uh, it's such a treat yeah i do i would agree and i think it gives us a sense of hope as well to see yeah. other countries that are further ahead and they've just managed things better than yeah. we have um so obviously with you returning to Turkey, I mean, it goes without saying that you would recommend the destination. We did oh, have um, <laughs> we did have a question that was uh, typed in before we started and someone had asked about whether you felt it was the right destination for families. So perhaps we can answer that. Sure, of course. Um, it's a great destination for families. I definitely recommend, I mean, uh, in Istanbul you can have time of walking around, but it's great to book families uh, a, a guide with um, whoever their choice is, um, uh, because there's so much to learn and so much to see. Um, uh, for kids of all ages, um, can be accommodated very well. I felt it to be a very safe, um, comfortable place. It was a little hot. I would say that was my only thing, but as we start to move into the fall, the weather's going to improve yeah. highly. So it's a great time to be looking to go now and into winter. Um, then when I was there, it was 90 plus degrees with the marble shining the sun right onto you. So that was a little intense, uh, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah. great destination for families, uh, particularly for kids once they start getting uh into ancient history in schools so they can now see see it in person instead of just seeing it in a textbook no absolutely that's so true so before we open up for questions because i'm sure that there's lots of people joining today that would love to be able to uh, ask you their question is there anything that you would like um, me to ask you or anything you'd like to share about your trip um that i haven't asked you so far well you've covered you've covered so much um uh i'm trying to think what to go on i'd say i'd say the best things i'd recommend there is get in and explore the food in turkey and the cuisine is is truly a highlight um don't just go to the fancy places walk around everything is very clean and very safe 
Um, I asked our guide as soon as we got there, show me everything local, show me where you would go. Uh, cuisine should be a highlight. So if you have foodies that are looking to travel, Turkey should be one of their top trips to look at um, for now and in the future. Same with historians. Um, Hotel-wise, you've got a great selection of, of five-star hotels that are, uh, compared to the rest of the world's pricing, very reasonably priced with lots of choices. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can add great. to it. Um, and some great oh. shopping, too, unfortunately. <laughs> you brought back a few souvenirs. That's always nice. <laughs> brought back a really nice rug. <laughs> great. Good for you. Very authentic. Um, okay, so Brenda, I think, is going to help us. Um, and um, do we have some questions, Brenda, for Jonathan? We do. The first will be from Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Kathy? Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Hi. 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 Um, you may have covered this earlier, and I just wanted to double check. Do you, if you're heading to another country on Turkish Air and you need to have a positive, uh, I mean, pardon me, a negative COVID test upon arrival, like Kenya, for instance. Yep. Do you um, have to overnight in Istanbul or are there rapid testing um, available at the airport? Great question. Um, funny enough, that was our destination after Turkey. Um, uh, you do not have to overnight. So we came up, I'll give you what our schedule was. Uh, we flew up from Izmir in the morning we essentially connected so our bags were already checked through to nairobi but we left the airport inside the international terminal but outside of immigration and security is um a uh 24 hour seven day a week COVID testing center that does pcr uh tests that are iso certified those are good for kenya or anywhere else you could be thinking like rwanda uh the results came back they say usually about four hours. For us, it took five being Eid, but they say up to 24. Um, I'm sure that's just a warning that they give, but generally it's somewhere between three and five hours to get the results back. So, so you could land in the morning and then correct. plan on uh, a late evening departure and you're probably okay. 99% yeah. sure you're good and the cost is only $25 too. So okay, I don't think get a lot of complaints about uh, about that. Um, you'll get an e-document. The only thing is if a country wants it printed, you would have to find access to a printer. Um, but I, I've, so far I've found in all the countries I've been to that everyone is fine just looking at your phone. Um, they just made me zoom in in Kenya so they could read everything. Uh, but it was easy. And in that, by the way, in that time when we left the airport, <clears throat> our guide picked us up and took us out to the Black Sea. Uh, so we went for lunch on the Black Sea and got to look around a little and literally came back to the airport five hours later and the test results were already there. Great, Lovely. thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Um, the next question, could you um, tell us a little bit about your experience in the new Istanbul airport? Sure, um, <clears throat> it's on landing. On arrival, um, it's nothing that exciting. It's big, but it doesn't feel that big. Um, it, 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 it wasn't anything to write home about, but opposite when you're leaving. Um, when you are, it's big and grand and beautiful on its entrance and ticket encounters. And then in the side of duty free, it's, it's, it's like the mall of the Emirates, basically. Um, uh -huh it's it's incredible on that side so you kind of get this this feeling on landing of this is it it should be more exciting but i mean it's fine right. you're getting in you just flew a long way and you get out um but they've they've really done a nice job there it's it's big but it doesn't feel massive it doesn't feel like you're exhausted to walk to your next gate airports like um, madrid or like brussels feel bigger whether they are or they aren't um where you're just hiking. I mean, in Brussels, I've had a 140 gate connection. Uh, yeah. you, you, I never had something like that there. Um, they, the layout is built comfortably and really nice and easy to navigate. Yeah, no, it's true. And we, and Seasong does offer a VIP 
as side meet and greet. Yeah. If, if, they yeah, do. If, if, if everybody wants it, it uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's a great service to have. It's, but it's at the same time, it's, everything is very simple and easy too. So yeah. it's not one of those airports where if you don't have it, your clients are going to be lost or you as a traveler will be lost. It's everything is in English. Everything is simple to navigate. Um, well done airport overall. Needs a little more air yeah. conditioning. <laughs> Brenda, last, any other questions? Last question, Don, Jonathan. Did yep. you shop at the Grand Bazaar and was it crowded? Uh, we did not shop. We did go. Uh, we didn't buy anything. It was um, uh, on Grand Bazaar terms, almost vacant. Uh, it was so quiet. Uh, numbers of people would be, I, I, I put it maybe around a hundred um, in there, but the normal time of being body to body and you're pushing through people, not at all, not not at all. Very quiet. If we wanted to shop, everything was open. Um, and we we just walked through so much of it um, and experienced it and enjoyed it, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't crowded at all. So the most of the shops were open. They are. They are open. Yeah, which is wonderful. So, and you said that was our last question, Brenda. That was the last question. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, um, you know, I have to say, I would, I really want to just get on a plane and travel to to Turkey. And I want, I felt like that previously, and now after speaking with you, Jonathan, just so everybody knows, we will be sharing. Um, Jonathan wrote a fantastic piece that was featured in Luxury Travel Advisor magazine and he also wrote up a great blog and he shared some wonderful video content of his experience. So Jonathan very kindly um, has said that we can share that with everybody who was able to join us today and those of you that will listen to the recording as well. Um, You know, I am so happy to say that I've got a trip to Mexico and a trip to the UK coming up in the next couple of months, but I'm, I'm way behind you, Jonathan. So just before we leave, where is your next trip to uh the next one we're starting with ecuador both in the mainland and the galapagos uh from there flying the very short route back to turkey um Mm -hmm. a bunch of connections but but getting there we're going to be covering this time istanbul and then heading down to troy uh to see Mm -hmm. the ruins of troy and the very newly rebuilt trojan horse um uh, then two more nights in istanbul from there uh we, I think as of today, I can say it because I, I, I heard we should be good for the visa, but uh, we're going to Uzbekistan um, oh, and fantastic. traveling through Central Asia. Um, we'll be there for a week. Um, and then from there, we are flying back to Turkey. Um, to, again, Istanbul becomes the most amazing hub spot to jump around the world. Uh, so we're there for a 20 hour layover. So we're going to be going to another hotel and crashing for a day and then heading out that night. And then we're going to Egypt. We're starting with the Sinai Peninsula and then heading over to the other side for a Nile cruise and experiencing Cairo. Well, honestly, you are a true inspiration uh, for our industry. And I just think it's fantastic you're you're out there and traveling the world safely, um, you know, and conscientiously. So again, thank you so much for, for joining us today. I'm sure that if any of you, you know, want to reach out to Jonathan at, at some point, um, yes to talk to him further I can connect you but honestly this was truly wonderful and um, I just could chat to you all day but I know we all have to go and do some work <laughs> so thank you Rebecca thank you for having me today thank you it was just such a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you when you're back in LA hopefully in person or come Absolutely. up to Sonoma I'll Absolutely. be in touch Looking forward to it. thank Thanks, you Rebecca. and thank you everyone for joining us take care bye everybody bye, see you everyone. soon <laughs> Safe travels. Bye-bye.